Word. Hey guys, how you guys doing? Uh, so I was very fortunate enough to see a band called Citizen for the first time, or actually many of times, but actually sit there and watch uh, at Sandy Fury, and I was like blown away by how incredible this band is. So today I actually get to interview one of the members of uh, Citizen. Can you uh, introduce yourself? My name is Matt, and I sing for Citizen. Matt Caracas. <laughs> so Care a kiss. Care for a kiss. Nobody knows how to say it. So. Okay, wait, wait, actually, yeah, I, I wanted to ask you. That, uh, so you normally, I introduce people and say their name, but I was like, dude, I'm going to fuck this up, so I'm going to let you do this yourself. That's the whole yeah. reason why I did that. I've heard, like, Kirkies, Correx. I've heard Crackass. I've heard, I've heard it all. So it's Care a kiss. Care a <laughs> kiss. That's actually a cool last name. But, uh, it's, it's Hungarian, so <clears throat> whatever. So, so where are you from? Where, where do you live and where, where, where did you grow up? So I grew up in Lambertville, Michigan, which is right on the border of Ohio. You could, like, throw a rock into Ohio. And now I live in Toledo, Ohio. I was born in Toledo, Ohio, brought straight to Michigan. And then in my 20s, I moved to Toledo because it's really cheap to live here. So, so, as, far, mean, so like as far as, like, like, music culture and, like, your involvement in music, I'm assuming, like, Detroit was probably, like, the closest city? Or like, honestly, like, the Toledo, like, music scene is, was, is pretty popping. Um, whenever bands come through, which is few and far between, the shows are always really good. Um, but the local shows are really good, especially for hardcore and metal. Um, but, yeah, I would drive to Detroit quite a bit for shows, and that's only, like, an hour away or so. So, yeah. so like, yeah. So Citizen, as far as being a band, you guys always have the have have had this like interaction with like the hardcore world. How like did you grow up going to hardcore shows, or how how what's your involvement in it? How did you get involved in it, dude? I I never really understood how that connection happened. Um, I mean, I definitely go to hardcore shows, and I I had a lot of you know friends that participate in hardcore in Toledo and whatnot, and but you know. I just think, like, for some weird reason, the emo or whatever and hardcore world is kind of, like, intertwined in a weird way. It's still separate, but, um, you know, when F Citizen first started touring, um, I remember, like, I was, you know, still like Backtrack a lot, but back in, like, 2012 or 2013, I, I can't remember what year, I got like a random text from Vitalo and I didn't even know who he was. And he was like, Hey, love your band. Like, let's go do a backtrack season tour. And I was like, well, that's really weird. I would never, you know, especially at the time I was like, I would never think that would happen, but that yeah. is awesome. You know? And then just as like the band kept going, like we were touring with hardcore bands and I kept hearing about people and hardcore bands liking citizen. And I was like, Oh, this is freaking awesome. You know, I didn't. So yeah. So then we played sound and fury and shit. We play these, Fest and it's it's a little even still you know what was that was that two years ago or was that last year two years ago right two years ago yeah 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 before I was like really nervous before that show because I was there and I was like Jesus Christ we're like the only fucking sissy you know band on the like the big stage and and I was just kind of like prepared for like a really bad awkward set because I just just didn't know you know and yeah. then we got up there and it was just business as usual. And I was like, man, it's, it just feels good to like be in another world, but also still have like a lot of support, you know? So it, yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was a crazy set. It was really good. Yeah. So like when you first started, like, how'd you like, like what was your first interaction with like music and going to shows and how'd you, like, how did Citizen become a band? How did, how did Citizen start as a band? So I, um, am a drummer like that's my first instrument I guess and I played drums in bands my whole life and um, I eventually got like so sick of buying cymbals and heads and I got sick of moving the kit to venues and stuff just like local venues around Toledo. The idea of being a drummer sounds horrible. That's, oh why, my. that's why I sing in a band too. <laughs> it is literally as bad as you think it is and it's expensive and it sucks so I quit playing drums to be like wow because playing drums was such a hassle and it was so expensive i was like i sing too so i'm just gonna sing in a band and then that's when i started citizen so 
and that has worked out thankfully <laughs> yeah i mean dude that's it's awesome i mean when how long has citizen been a band since 2009 so yeah. and then we we started like we, we did our first tour with uh turnover it was both turnover and citizens first full u.s tour we did it in the summer of 2012 so we started touring in 2012 and yeah so so he, he has been like non-stop since then right yeah and, and it's funny because like you know last year we were touring so much that like at one point last year i like straight up thought we were gonna break up because everybody seemed so sick of it and uh, you know I mean, I'm like a homebody, especially. I'm always the one like saying no to things, and yeah, yeah, you know. And COVID, I mean, it sucks, but it's also like I feel like for the first time in a long time, like I'm ready to like go out. You know, I'm like ready to play shows. Yeah. Which before it was kind of like losing its magic for me. I was like, fuck, like I just want to go home so bad. You know, because I really, I really, really like the writing recording aspect so I got like a studio in my garage that I built and um, you know we just did the newest citizen record there that's not out yet but um so I really like doing that and then for a while I was just like fuck like wow, now I gotta go tour this sucks you know but yeah. now I, I like everything again and I'm, I'm ready you know so yeah it's almost like, wear it's a mask a, it's ah. like a, a blessing in disguise because I like, do the, the, the same feeling prior to to this pandemic, I was like, dude, I'm, dude, I just want to sit at home for a fucking week, please. Like they do. Like I don't think people understand how much work goes into touring and understands like how much. Not only is it mentally draining, it's also physically so bad for you. <laughs> like, it, dude. Oh my god. Yeah, eating like Cliff bars every day. People like, dude. The worst part about touring is the lack of privacy. Like everywhere you go, everywhere you turn, someone is right there. Unless you're like, unless you like lock yourself in a bathroom, you know. And so, like touring, like ruined my social life. Honestly, like I would get home and I'm just like, I have for a long time, for years and years and years, I had a 10 minute rule where if I was home from tour and I got invited to something, if it took longer to drive. From my house to there, longer than ten minutes, I wouldn't go. <laughs> I, dude, I, I don't blame you. Like that's dude. When I get home from tour, I do not leave my house. But I, like, yeah. did did it did it become for you kind of like a like a like socially like your social life? Is it did you build some kind of like social anxiety because you were so constantly like inter, you're constantly interacting with people, you're constantly interacting, you don't have any space. Did it turn into this like negative thing where you just like, like for me, it's like almost like social anxiety where like, I just need space. I just need, you know, and how, 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 how do you deal with that for like, you know, almost 10 years, you know, how, well, how do you on tour, like I just stopped talking to people and I know that, that like you come across as like a kind of an asshole and I've been told I'm an asshole or heard that I'm an asshole because I, you know, don't talk that much or whatever, but like really it's just like, I don't know what to fucking say to you. I'm nice. You know what I'm saying? I'm nice. And like, Oh, thanks for being here. This is awesome. And, but like, I just like, you're around people constantly. So like when I'm at a venue and I'm like walking around with my headphones on, like working out by myself or just like sitting in the van laying down, it's just cause it's just cause you need that space, you know, like, when you get to the venue and everybody fucks off and you're just there and it's like, ooh, like this is my time, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. mostly, mostly as a singer, you know, like I bet I can only assume being the singer of a band, you're the front man, you're the voice, you're the person that like kind of speaks on behalf of the band for the most part, you know? So like tr right. yeah. trying, to, trying to find that balance. I, I always tell people, they're like, dude, singers are always dicks. I'm like, dude, also, also put yourself in their, in their shoes and understand that like, they're constantly being confronted and asked questions and constantly like, it's like, you know, and, and I totally understand it. Cause I, I got to the point where like, I just shut off and I'm just like, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to be mean, but right. I just, I just, I need. Yeah. To. And, and I, and in the most not conceited way ever, I like, you know, I completely understand that. You know, you just like, you need your time. I'm fortunate 
because like Nick, um, our guitarist Nick Ham, he's a fucking talker, you know. And yeah. so when we like go somewhere and there's people around, I don't even have to say anything because it's not awkward because everybody else is just talking away and I'm just kind of like, you know, like zoning out. <laughs> so I have people to rely on, but like, and that's another thing too. Like, if, you know, if I barely know somebody, it's like, I kind of like overthink things that I should say. So if I'm like stuck in a room with Joe Schmo, you know, and there's like pressure to talk, I'm like, uh, so really bright out today. You know, like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so it just, you know. No, I, I get that. Well, uh, you know, so this pandemic hit and it's, it's put music, it's put the whole music industry to fucking halt. Right. Um, for, you know, some people's, some people are, are taking it well. Some people are finding positive outlets. And there's also that whole group of people that have been going into a depressive state, an anxious state. How are you personally taking this? Like, are you finding positive outlets? Are there days where you're just kind of like stressed out? It's like, what's going to happen with the band? What's going to, you know, like, how are you personally and how has how's it affected the band? Dude, honestly, like, I I feel like I've always had some sort of anxiety, but I didn't know it was anxiety. And um, I've been having it really bad recently. And my girlfriend, Shay, you know, she's like a nurse and shit, but so she knows a lot of things. So whenever I have questions, she answers. But I was like, I feel like there's like one day in particular, I was like, I feel like I'm being like electrocuted. I like feel like I'm panicking. I'm like being electrocuted. She's like, that's anxiety. And then I had this like, light bulb in my head that I was like, whoa, you know, because I'd always hear or see people talking about like dealing with this and that and that, and I could never relate to it because I was just like, I don't have that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But it seems like the more stagnant I am and the, the less like unsure about things, you know, I like I'm like having these like weird anxiety attacks that it's really new for me, yeah, you know, yeah. so... For the most part, I'm cool, and I, you know, I work out a lot, and I do like Muay Thai, mm -hmm. and I'm with Shay, and she fucking rules, you know. So like, I feel good most of the time, but like days when I like sit around too much, or you know, we've been driving a lot. We like, we actually just came out. You're in LA, right? We just drove out. We like drove out to LA because she's never been west of Chicago. Like did like a little road trip, and you know, like the more like I sit in the drives or just like sit around, I feel like the worse it kind of gets, you know? So yeah. I'm like part of the team now. I have problems. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, for the most part, for the most part, can you see me? Sorry, I thought I broke up. For the most part, like, is it safe to assume that like Citizen has been like your career for the last X amount of years? Yeah, absolutely. Like I don't work besides Citizen. And I think like the coolest part about that, you know, is like, sit, nobody in Citizen, like, we didn't start the band with intentions to be like, I want to be in a band and I want this to be my job. It was kind of just like, let's have some fun because we're getting these opportunities. Yeah. And like, it was supposed to be a thing where I was going to do like a tour and then I was going to start going to college for mechanical engineering and, you know, and then we got like the first check and you're kind of like, Oh, like this is kind of cool. You know? And I so like, citizen, yeah. So citizen was like never meant to be a job and, um, it doesn't feel like a job still, but you know, I, I think uh, some anxiety that I'm having lately is like now that I'm, now that like citizen doesn't exist in the moment, mm -hmm. especially like, I'm just kind of like thinking about my future in a way. And I'm like, I don't really, like, are things going to go back to normal? Are things going to go back? When, if, and when things go back to normal, are people going to come to Citizen shows? Like, there's going to be so many bands touring at once. Fucking Justin Bieber. You know, like, people are going to spend all their money on that. Like, are people going to come? You know, like, are people still going to support it? I yeah, see bands, yeah. like, I see bands releasing music now, and I see people talk about it for, like, an hour. And then nobody talks about it ever again. So it's kind of like, wow, like, this is a really bad time. Yeah, and, and that's that was my next question. That like, 
I hate to ask this question, but like in the back of your head, like, are you thinking of like another career or something that you have to do next to, to sustain? Cause you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, I got to start thinking of plan B just in case, you know? And, Dude, yeah. Like yeah. I'm really interested in computers and um, I do like game development. Like I like make video games for That's fun awesome. and you know, I've been thinking about it like, oh man, and I like 3D sculpt like character models and shit. Dude, that's awesome. So, yeah, it's really cool. And uh, so every, you know, every, whenever I start like getting those thoughts, I start thinking like, man, I should really like be honing in on my skills so I could like start doing that, you know? And I I can record bands too, and that's good money and stuff, but yeah. bands are really frustrating to deal with, you know? So. That- I want to ask, how did you get into, like, like the whole gaming and 3D modeling? Like, what program do you use to do that? So I use ZBrush, okay. and then I texture the, the models in um, Substance Painter, and then I usually um, do um, Unreal Engine. But I've dabbled around with, like, Game Maker and Unity, and um, I my first game was made on Game Salad, which, like, you get no respect for using game salad, but you know, you get respect for using Unreal though. So yeah, I'm legit, yeah. I swear. Have you ever thought about like, have you ever made visuals or anything like that for Citizen or like? Not for Citizen. Nick, the guitarist Nick is like the visual guy for Citizen. I do, I do most of the writing for Citizen and then, you know, so I'll like do a demo and then I show it to everybody and then everybody like puts their fingerprint on it. And then now I record it too. And then, then I'm clocked out. I just show up for the shows, the music videos and the fucking merch designs and whatever. I just, I say, yeah, I'll do that tour. And then I go, you know, but aside from that, I just kind of, I just do the music. But so, you, so, so as far as citizen goes on the, on the writing aspect of it, you're kind of like the brainchild behind, behind a lot of the writing. Yeah. You know, some song for, for most of the songs. Yes. Obviously like some, you know, people, People in the band have written some songs, but for the most part, I'll I'll do the whole demo, and I I like dabble in everything. So, um, you know, I'll write everything and then show it to them, and then they'll learn their parts, and then they will like rewrite their part. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I like give them the song, and then everybody like, oh okay, I like this. I don't like what you did here, so I'm gonna do this, and yeah. you know, it, it like becomes a a group, a group, thing, a group. which yeah. is cool. You know, for the for the last record, um, for it's not out yet. It keeps getting pushed back. Um, what's the, what's the title for the record? If you don't mind me asking, I can't say it unless you can edit it out. <laughs> don't, say get, it. don't say it. Don't forget to edit it out. <laughs> I'll, I'll get spanked. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, we'll find out soon. <laughs> we tried to do that thing where we were like, man, like let's all get in a room and totally jam it out. You know what I'm saying? And then. Yeah. It ended up being these like three hour long sessions where everybody's just noodling, you know, and yeah. and like usually I you know I'll write a song guitar, but everybody we're jamming it out, so like I'm just sitting there with no instrument, and after like a couple weeks of doing that and literally not having one song, we were just like let's just go back to the old way. <laughs> well, I mean, I have so I have to ask them like being that you you know are write a lot of the music, what influence, like, what are you listening to? And then you write your songs. Like what, what is influencing your music and what you write? It's honestly like, I'll, I'll tell you mine afterwards. Cause mine are kind of off there, but like, I want to hear like, what are you listening to as you write citizen songs? As I write citizen songs. Okay. So it, it depends on the record, I guess. Like during everybody's going to heaven, I was listening to a lot of Marilyn Manson and Nine Inch Nails, you know, <laughs> like stuff like that. And then we put out the album and everybody's just like, Puh! sounds just like brand new. And it's like, okay, well, you know, I guess you've never heard like any dark rock yeah. or whatever you want to label it, but you don't know anything, <laughs> you know, but you know, so I guess stuff like that. Um, I, for the new record, I was listening to a lot of like fast paced stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, what's that band name? The Frights? No, not the Frights. The, the Frights is good, but I don't, that's not the band I'm thinking of. Let's see. 
Let's see. It's it's always it's always cool to hear what like is influencing bands when they write records because it's completely opposite than what people would assume. Like right, the um, yeah, right. So like the Faint was a band that I was listening to a lot. Um, Modest Mouse a lot. That's I awesome. love Modest Mouse. I was listening to the Gorillas a lot actually too, which I still am. And the Gorillas have been releasing new music and I and. Me and Shay are obsessed with it. Some good shit. It's, it's funny you say that because, like, recently I've been on this weird kick of, like, listening to these, like, indie bands from, like, the early 2000s. Like, I was listening to Modest Mouse. I was listening to, like, Cursive and, like, and, like, I think who else was that? The Fate was another one. But it was, like, yeah. listening to, like, a whole era of, like, She Wants Revenge. Stuff, like, from that Recently? Era. Yeah, like, literally, like, last week. Like, I, Our like, brains are connected. Dude, that's all I was listening to last week. It's so what weird. Happening? What is happening? <laughs> You know, I showed um, Bruce, you know, Bruce, yeah. the, the new Citizen record, and he he hit me yesterday. He was like, dude, this is awesome. Listen to this band. And he sent me this band called Gang of Four. Great. And, and I never heard of it. And I started listening to it, and I'm like, what the? This sounds like the new Citizen record. <laughs> and I was like, was I, like, unintentional, like, subconsciously, like, stealing from this band? You know, it doesn't actually sound like it, but it's like in the same vein. And I was like, "Whoa, this is crazy!" But I, you know, I've been listening to a few of their songs Great. a lot. I'm gonna send you that whole '80s, '90s, like goth era. Like, there's dude, there's so many great bands. Like, there's... it's like like the dance vibe. I'm like really into like, you know, like the dance punk, like trashy, like yeah, you know, like it could be electronic music, but it's not. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of, it's like raw, you know? And I think that like the new Citizen album like has a lot of that in it. Yeah. What about, what about like lyrical content? Like what are you, what, what are you thinking when you write songs? Um, I, um, I try to like, I try to switch it up. Like we have an album called Youth mm -hmm. and that was like, you know, I was really young, like 17 or 18, 17 years old, I think. I don't remember. And, um, you know, I was like very whiny and I'm just complaining. And then, you know, and then, uh, then everybody's going to heaven. I was like, okay, I'm going to be more cryptic. So, you know, I'd be writing a lyric and I would want to say this, but I'd be like, but I don't want to directly say it. I want to like beat around the bush, you know? So those lyrics are kind of like that, you know, I tried to be creative and say things in ways I normally wouldn't. And then um, with As You Please, I kind of like tried to meet in the middle a little bit. Yeah. And then when we first started demoing for the newest album, um, our drummer at the time, he's not in the band anymore, um, I sent him, or we just finished his demo, and I sent it with vocals, and he texted me, and he was like, hey, like, um, you know, these lyrics, I feel like they're too much, because they were, like, very, you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, because I was, like, really being creative with it, you know? Yeah. Or at least I thought it was cool. I guess not. And uh, so he was like, because I do solo stuff on the side too. And um, he was like, you know, sometimes I listen to your solo songs and I wish we got more of those, like more direct lyrics. And I was like, okay. So from then on out with all the new Citizen songs, I just, whatever was on my brain was what was on the page, you know. and yeah. Or on, on my iPhone notes. I don't write lyrics. I'm not a psychopath. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I mean, for the most part, are the songs like kind of personal, or are they just kind of more like in a creative outlet, or what? It's very personal for the most part. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty angry album, and the lyrics are kind of in your face, talking shit a little bit, which feels good. You know, it's healthy. What's I, up? I, yeah, I say it's very healthy. You know, yeah. Whenever you know, I always, I always hate talking about lyrics and or at least my, personally I always hated talking about my lyrics or I didn't like writing songs because the only creative way or the only creativity I had was to write about negative things or angry things but that was like the outlet you know so right. but it, but I also found it to be very healthy to like write it and like release it you know yeah so like absolutely the, the I think and I think too, on another level of like writing lyrics, like 
I feel like when you talk about your lyrics and talk about specific songs and you know what they are about and whatever, or what did you mean when you said this? I think it kind of ruins songs in a way. Like, I think music should be about like relating to it on your level. Mm -hmm. And like, like for example, there's a Queen song called "All Dead, All Dead." I love the song. I love the song, mm -hmm. but. You know, I'm like, holy shit, and you know, I'm like, I'm like relating to it in my own way and how I, what I want it to be about. And then I read in an interview that it's about Brian May's dead cat. And you know, and then it kind of like, it like ruined my perception of the song. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and it almost like ru it didn't ruin the song. It's still a good song, but I don't, I don't listen to it as much as I used to because I'm like, it's about his fucking dead cat. I don't care about that fucking. Yeah. Cat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck that cat. You wanna stop you know? your cat? <laughs> you know, so I, I, I thought it was so much deeper, dude. God damn literally, it. I thought it was so much deeper than that. And so so I feel like lyrics wise when people like is in interviews when they're like, What's this sound about? I just usually never answer the, the question because it's like, Well, it's whatever you want it to be about. You know, I have a reason for writing it and you know I want you to relate to it how you feel most comfortable relating to it, you know? Yeah, definitely. I totally agree. Um, you know, as far as Citizen goes, like, what what did you guys have planned for the year? Like, was it supposed to be a busy year for you guys or, like? Yeah, we were supposed to do um, – I think we had, the tour was in March. It was going to be, like a, like, a small club tour because the band went through some shit and um, – everybody's morale was like very very low and like once again i we were unsure of the future of the band and um if you don't mind me asking when you go like went through some shit in this like sense of like the band wanting to stop or like you guys yeah like people being tired we had member changes and you know and people leaving the band and you know so it's just you know, and then bad things like Nick and Eric's dad like passed away. Yeah. You know, it was just like a very hard time. Yeah. And, um, you know, so morale was really low. And we were kind of looking to this like club tour, like these like small cap venues to like to lift us up and get us motivated again. And um, we just finished the record. So we were all excited. You know, we were excited to play some new songs off. But then COVID shut everything down. And then it was like, okay, you know, we'll just reschedule it for a few weeks later. Then obviously that got shut down. And then um, we were, it was like, okay, well, we'll just do the fall tour right after we release the album. And then the album got pushed back. Tour got canceled. So then the album got pushed back. Time comes time to do the album again. And then it gets pushed back again. Yeah. And now, you know, then we, like, scheduled a tour for February. Got canceled, pushed back. We didn't announce it. We're just trying to figure things out. Yeah, yeah of course. You know, I think it's February, something like that. And, you know, now it, now we're, like, projecting May. But I'm sure, you know, I'm being told that we don't know if that's going to happen either. We were supposed to go overseas in, in the summer just yeah. for a little bit. But, you know, whatever. At first, when everything got canceled, I was like, yes. You know, like, I get to just be home. And, yeah. you know. I, but, mean, I mean, now, like, the uh, at least the overall morale of the band is, like, you guys are eager to play now, right, I assume. Yeah, everybody feels pretty rejuvenated. And, yeah. Uh, I, so let, let's say let's say you know, once the world comes correct, what's what's your like dream tour? Like, who do you like? Let's say it's a last citizen tour. Who are you gonna tour with? Last citizen tour. All right. Let's okay. And there's no limit to how big the bands are. No limit. Four bands. Four bands. Including Citizen, four bands. Including Citizen. Citizen, Arctic Monkeys, Paramore, Third Eye Blind. That's a banger. <laughs> and uh, Modest Mouse. That's mine. Mo you know, Modest Mouse with Johnny Marr? I don't care. As long as, as long as they play the songs, I don't give a fuck who's playing. As long as Isaac Brock is singing, you know... You know, I didn't know any the Arctic Monkeys. I didn't know the Arctic Monkeys until this year. I started talking to Shay, and she started sending me all these songs, and I was just like, "Ugh, you know, like, this shit is sick." So that that would be a cool band to tour with. But she has a big crush on the singer, so I'd have to beat his ass probably. 
it's it's crazy because like I, I really didn't get into Modest Mouse until I fi- I found out Johnny Marr played guitar for them for a while, and I have to yeah. ask, are you are you a Smiths fan, Morrissey fan, or no? Not really. I I like a the select fuck? few. I like a select few songs, and it's not that I don't. It's not that I don't. Okay, it's not that I don't like them. I just never took the time to really dig in. But you know, I know there is a light that never goes out. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Cemetery yeah. Gates. I know that shit. You know. Dude, I'm Mexican, man. I love Morrissey. <laughs> oh, is that a Mexican thing? <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. Dude, Morrissey shows in Mexico. Insane. So the whole thing is like I only listen to bands based on how jacked they are, and Morrissey doesn't seem that jacked, so I don't fuck with him. No, he's a fat, <laughs> fat lob, dude. Fat <laughs> loser. I love Morrissey, but he's also a fucking fat loser. It's kind of racist lob, you know. <laughs> yeah, he, I've only ever heard bad things, but I'm sure I would like more, you know, more Smiths and more Morrissey if I like really listened to it. But I just, for some reason, I feel like. He has, like, the catalog is so much that, like, I have a hard time, like, knowing where to begin, too, you know? I feel that way a lot of, about a lot of bands, you know? I'll send you, I'll send you a decent mix. Yeah, send, send me the, the, top, the top tracks. The top, top ten. So, as, you know, this whole year has been, I, like, it's like a movie, you know? It's crazy. Uh, pandemic hit, and it just doesn't seem to have an end in sight. You know, politics, we're coming on a new, you know, new election and cops are being wild and crazy. Crazy. You know, it's like the Black Lives Matter movement has been picking up and picking up steam, but it's also almost like turned into like some kind of like political divide or there's like this political view on it. When And, my, and me personally, it's just about right and wrong. And, you know, right. there's, there's no politics involved, but. It seems to be from you know city to city, and people you know everybody has a different perspective on it. Um, how has it affected you the last few months? Like you're watching the news, you're watching these things going on on you know social media. Is it kind of overwhelming, or like, are you kind of learning from it? Or I mean, and, and I'll say me personally, I, I, there's been days where I'm like, dude, turn turn off the fucking TV, turn off the Twitter. I don't give a shit, you know. And it's how, all how's it for you? Yeah, I feel the same. It's all frustrating. Like, I obviously, I support Black Lives Matter and whatnot. And I actually had, like, something, you know, really bad happen where, like, you know, my friend was a, is, was a police officer in Toledo. And, uh, um, you know, I would call him and we would talk about things. This is when, you know, the, the George Floyd stuff first started happening. Mm-hmm. And um, he would tell me where the protests were. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, like, I'm, you know, he's a police officer. And uh, he's like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like with you guys, essentially, you know, to ver- to make it very brief. Yeah. And then he ended up being shot and killed. Uh-huh. Um, you uh-huh. know, and he was like one of my best friends growing up. And, you know, we, we kind of like fell, drifted apart because he started having kids. And, you know, family has changed things. So yeah. um, it was really, it was like a really weird thing because I was, you know, I've seen the police do terrible things you know and i'm like on the people's side and um you know then my friend dies and it had nothing to do with black lives matter was the whole thing and it was right down the street from my house he was in the home depot parking lot and some drunk guy just shot him and killed him and um so i started going to like the funeral and all this stuff and you know you know the ceremonies before and the vigils and and it was like you know, the Toledo Police Department was like, it was being politicized. Yeah. And, you know, they're kind of, you know, it's kind of like, this is what happens to us and all those thugs, you know, like all this stuff. And it had nothing to do with anything. And I was just talking to Anthony a week prior to him dying. And he was like, oh, yeah, like shit needs to change within the police force. You know what I'm saying? So that yeah, was true. all, that was like very weird and overwhelming to me. And, um, you know, I feel like that whole thing kind of made me like. It was really irritating, just yeah. to be. Very I, I mean, yeah, I can't. You know, I can only imagine. Like, you obviously are a smart dude. You have a head on your shoulders, but also having a relationship with someone who is a you know a police officer. It's trying to find the balance of like, what is what is enough or what is too much and what if like 
and, and me personally, like, you know, for me, for a long time, you know, you'd see, the, in, at least in like alternative cultures, you see these like shirts that say all cops are bastards and these like, right. these, these, you know, derogatory terms towards police. And for the longest time, I'm like, dude, I don't, I didn't, I don't agree with it. I didn't agree with it. I was like, this is kind of like, you know, naturally I assume and hope people are good, you know, like not, I can't say that and sit there like, oh, they all suck. They all deserve to die, you know? Cause that's just very arrogant for me to say. Right. And, uh, and, you know, watching this, watching what's going on, you kind of have to acknowledge that like, you know, I hate to say it, but guilty by association. So trying to find that balance of like, not be ignorant and just blast information or just say whatever off, off the hinge of my head, but to understand that like, you know, people, Things do need to change. This, these departments do need to change. And mostly me- mentally, they need to rearrange what's going on. Right. To, you know, and it's, it's, again, like having that relationship with someone that is a poli- you know, police officer, like one of my best friends, both his parents are police officer, officers. And I love him. He's my friend. But it's just like trying to have that conversation where like, like it's, it's hard. It's difficult, you know? Absolutely. And yeah, like, I mean, before, his name was Anthony. Before Anthony became a police officer, he was like a fucking psychopath. Like, fighting everybody, and he had an, an, an All Cops or Bastards tattoo. He, you know, he had a tattoo that said, lick my nuts with guns on it. Like, you know, like, he's a fucking idiot, you know? And But, you know, like, you know, I loved him. And, uh, you know, so when he was like, I'm becoming a police officer, we were all like, you know, like, you yeah. fuck, what? You know, you have an A cap tattoo and you know, and then he you know, he said something, you know, like, Well yeah, like I that's kinda like why I'm gonna become a police officer. You know, so I could like hopefully like hopefully like change things or like help take steps to change things, you know, and like take what I yeah, And I thought that was really respectable and after that I never gave him shit again. Not that I gave him shit because I fucking hate all police officers. I just thought it was hilarious because he hated all police officers. And I was like, what are you doing? What? You know, but yeah, I thought that was really cool. And I, I think people have a hard time like having conversations about things without, um, you know, throwing insults or arguing. And, yeah. you know, obviously some things are very clear what's right and wrong, but, you know. And, you, and, and, it's, and it's awesome that you had a friend that was like that because, you know, I totally agree. There's, there is – a large community of people that do want to do well, do want to change things. And they're just normal people, you know, right. <clears throat> like vice versa. You know, like <clears throat> I have a lot of, uh, a lot of friends that are involved in like Los Angeles gang culture where you like, you look at someone and you perceive them to be something when like, I was like, yo, that's like one of the best dudes I know. One of the hardest working dudes I know. He may look like a fucking crazy cholo, but he's actually one of the most humbling human beings. Right. And, and the same thing someone could say about a cop is the same thing someone could say about, you know, you know, Latino culture, like black people, people just assume the worst. And, and, you know, hopefully people are able to communicate and change that because unfortunately we take too many things at face value when that's not what it is, you know? Absolutely. And I think, I think the internet is like a very toxic place I fucking and, you it. know, people, people that are fucking, complete morons have opinions on everything and they you know they think because you say y'all when you like make a post that everything they're saying is right and smart it's like shut the fuck up you know like it fucking pisses me off you know but um yeah i mean with that being said i i support the black lives matter movement you know i'm not a fucking you know kill everybody type person anyway you know like you know kill all cops that's you know that's not me but yeah. I do think, I do think, you know, cops do bad shit. Yeah. A, a lot of them do bad shit, and you know that should change because they're not supposed to do bad shit. So, yeah. <laughs> you and, know, like. Yeah, that's that's the that's the divided line between being rational, having common sense, and just being, you know, letting some kind of political divide change you who you are. Because the the fact is that Black lives do matter. And it's, it's about right and wrong. And like, you know, it's, it's, there's a systemic program that's been around for so long that it needs to change. Ho- hopefully people acknowledge that and don't try to p- 
push this other crazy agendas onto this yeah, like when people, you know? people say like all lives matter and shit. It's like oh, you just God. you just like don't yeah, it's like shut you just don't get it. You know, like I remember you know, someone in my family, you know, like an older person in my family, I was talking about yeah, you know I was talking about Black Lives Matter and they looked at me and they were like, All lives matter. And it was like all like pissed, like I was supposed to be like afraid and I was like yeah. Okay. <laughs> you fucking psycho. I feel like that's probably very common for like our old, like you know, our parents and grandparents, yeah. and like older generation, where like yeah. you know sometimes people are just a little hard headed, and I'm just like, no, mom, I didn't say it. like, come, oh, God, you, like, don't get it. you know, you just don't get it. Yeah, you just don't get it. But uh, anyways, dude, you know, hopefully the world comes correct. Hopefully we can see citizen again, and dude. I can't wait. Um, I, you know, I got a couple more questions for you. Yeah. What's a bucket list item before you die? What do you, what do you want to do? Bucket list item. Okay. So I used to want to skydive. I don't want to skydive anymore. I've become an Immortal Kombat, as I can see your room is. Yeah. So I want to be a playable character on Mortal Kombat. I'll be the weakest one. You know, see how many times you can lose. Uh, no, I like, uh, I want to go to Thailand. That is a bucket list. Um, you know, as far as traveling, I would like to go to Iga, Japan, because that's where the first ninja clan was, and I love ninjas. So I always, you know, when I was a kid, I always said I either wanted to be in a band or be a ninja. And I, I'm in a band now, so it's time to be a ninja. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I would really like to go to Iga, Japan, and like look at like the cool like temples, the you know, and all that shit. Um, that's awesome. I really want to make, um, I really want to write like a story and, you know, not even with intentions to like sell it or anything, but like, I think, I think, um, like being creative in the way that you can like create your own world and like build these like fake relationships or, you know, like these problems or whatever you want your story to be about. I think that's really cool. And I've tried multiple times to like sit down and like, write like a cool just story and you know you, have, like, you want to write like a fictional book i'm assuming yeah you know or something it doesn't have to be a long or anything i just like want to like accomplish it and you know like i like game of thrones a lot i like diablo a lot i think the cory the or the cory the story to the video game diablo yeah. is like really fucking sweet especially the first one it's just yeah. so like grim and gross and evil and it's cool you know and i like really want to like write something like that and that's awesome just to do it, and then maybe, you know, do like my own little video because I do the video game stuff. Like maybe like make a little video game around it. But every time, one time ago, a long time ago, I heard the expression like, "starting is the hardest part" in regards to writing a book or a story. And I never understood it or cared because I didn't care about writing a story. But once I got really into Mortal Kombat again, <laughs> I was like, "Man, I want to write a story." And then that was it. I'd pull up Microsoft Word and I'd be like. You know, and then I'd be like, oh, hold on, I'm going to check my phone real quick. You know, and then I'm like on my phone. Yeah. And I'd be like, all right, let's go. You know, and then I'm sitting there like, oh, I'll check my phone one more time. You know, and then all of a sudden it's been three hours. I got nothing done because I'm just like, for some reason, really self-conscious. You know, and I don't know I, why. I mean, I, I assume it's kind of like, it's pretty cool to people. It's, I mean, personally, it's pretty cool to see people that write music, write lyrics, because you have this creative mindset that you obviously like want to do you want to create things. You want to, you want to write a story. You want to write a game. And, and again, it's like, I totally like, it's, ob it's obviously feasible, but it's pretty cool to hear that. That's like the things you want to do because you're already so natural at, <clears throat> at writing music and lyrics. And I think, yeah, that, for me, it's going to be cool to see you write a story or a game or whatever. And I think, I think, yeah, again, the hardest part is starting, but I, I, you know, right. I'm assuming it's just like writing, you know, same thing when I write lyrics or writing music. At first, I'm just like, uh. <laughs> the first line is the hardest. Yeah, but then once you get it going, you know. It flows, yeah. yeah. Well, at some point, we're going to expect we're gonna ex expect a story and a, and a video game out of you, dude. Yeah, I hope so. I want it to be evil, you know, that shit. Diablo, <laughs> Diablo's fucking evil, dude, and that's why it's so sick. It's so... You know, in Mortal Kombat, it's like, I mean, Mortal Kombat is a little different because it's kind of this, like, big melting pot of everything badass. You know what I'm saying? You have, like, robots 
fighting ninjas and demons fighting military people. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, you know, Ed Boon and Jonathan Tobias, the dudes who made Mortal Kombat, were just like, what is cool? You know? Okay. That's badass. That's badass. That's badass. And then all of a sudden, Mortal Kombat is born. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but that's... I wonder. I wonder if the world knew how much how much you love evil shit and fighting. <laughs> so you look at Citizen. It's like this this like alternative indie, very like soft. Like you seem like such a soft spoken dude, and then here comes the here we come to find out that you just like evil shit and fighting. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like when I'm sculpting, I'm always, I'm okay. always sculpting demons, and you know I do Muay Thai. And, you know Shay does Muay Thai with me too. She started coming to my gym and. They're trying to set up a fight for us. I'm gonna do my first fight soon, and Dude, you know, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm stoked. And so, yeah, that's like maybe maybe there's just been too much citizen in my life, and now my natural reaction is to go polar opposite. Who knows? I don't know. All this pent up anger, dude. Let it out. <laughs> yeah, straight up. Everybody wants me to be so emo all the time, man. I'm so sick of being emo. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, Matt, dude, it's it's great talking to you. Before I let you go. Any shout outs or any anybody you want to say fuck you to before I let you go? Oh, Beef yeah. Hour, dude, we started this thing called Beef Hour because shout outs are cool, but sometimes you just want to tell someone fuck you, you know? Whether it be a person, <laughs> a place, a thing. You want to know what's funny is I, on my phone, on my phone, I have a list. Oh my God, you psycho. <laughs> I have a list and it is called Bands I Hate. And it has. You need two of them. I have. You need two. <laughs> oh my god! No, I can't. I can't do it. I don't want to start some shit with everybody. So the whole reason, the whole reason I made this list, is because, you know, you can hate Citizen, you can hate me, you can hate my brother's fucking band. I don't care. But if you're in a band and you're openly talking shit about another band, fuck you. And I'm gonna write your band name down. And when your fucking stupid band tries to play a show with my band, I'm going to say no. You know? So I have a list of bands that I don't like. So if they, if their name ever pops up, I could be like, nope. <laughs> so so the, criteria, the criteria for this list is just simply just people talking shit and being shitheads. Oh, absolutely. If you're in a fucking band or you play music and you, like, openly, like, talk shit about my band or my friend's band, you know, I write your name down. And, <laughs> you know, I go and I look for your stupid little band camp link and <laughs> I'll listen to your shitty band and make fun of it with whoever I'm with and then I talk and then I write it down and now I know, you know? Hey, so, sometimes you just got to know. Well, what about a shout out? Let's, see, let's hear a shout out. Shout out to um, Ivanj, our manager. We love her. And um, shout out to Mortal Kombat. Shout out to Tenshu, the video game. You know what I'm talking about. Shout out to Austin Lopez. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's all I got. Well, Matt, dude, thanks for joining us today and hanging out. I can't wait yeah, for you guys to play. And uh, I'm going to send you some playlists, dude. Yeah. Shoot it to me. Straight up. All right, brother. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Peace. See ya.